Hi guys, in today's video, I'm talking all about how much money I have made on YouTube as well as looking at some of my analytics. So every time I mention that I have a YouTube channel, inevitably somebody is going to ask me exactly how much I make and is it actually worth it. So in today's video, I'm going to go over some of my statistics and give you guys a quick overview of what you need to start on YouTube. So let's get started and I'll start first with a timeline just so you understand exactly where I am coming from. I've been on YouTube for about seven months now. My first video went up on December 31st, 2019. It was actually supposed to go up on January 1st, but I got really, really excited and I ended up publishing the, my first video at the end of last year instead of at the beginning of this year. So my analytics go all the way up until uh, J July 31st, 2020, and that is a total of seven months. So in those seven months, I have been monetized for two and a half months. I was actually monetized or accepted into the YouTube Partner Program on May 22nd. So in that time frame, I have made a total of $363.77. It's not a whole lot, but let me just give you guys the breakdown and I will talk a little bit about my analytics later on in the video. So in May, I made $46.98. In June, I made $127.31. And in July, I made $189.48. I haven't actually gotten paid in July because you get paid on the 21st and the 22nd of every month for the previous month. So there is a little bit of a delay in terms of when you get paid and you can either be paid by check or by direct deposit or by Western Union, depending on where you live in the world. So anyways, those are my numbers and let me quickly talk about what it actually takes to get monetized. So in order to be monetized on YouTube, you will need 1,000 watch hours, I'm sorry, 1,000 subscribers plus 4,000 watch hours in one calendar year. So for me, it was very, very easy to actually reach the 4,000 watch hours and I actually reached that at the beginning of April, but it took all the way up until May 20th before I actually reached the 1,000 subscriber level and then I think it took them two days for them to check out that my channel was actually advertiser friendly and then on May 22nd, I was actually allowed to play ads on my video. So the reason why I think it took me so long to reach the number of subscribers that was required for my channel, and I know this is very, very different as compared to a lot of other people who can really easily reach the subscriber count but can't reach the watch time, but everybody's journey is very different. In terms of my journey, the problem was I wasn't asking people to subscribe to my channel, so I will do that right now. Please do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already ready by pressing the subscribe button down below and what you want to do if you are a new youtuber is you want to include that in the first 30 seconds or at least in the first one minute of your video and that's because usually audience retention is a lot higher in the beginning of the video as compared to the end of a video so I wasn't doing that in any of my earlier videos I still don't do that simply because I find it very redundant and I, this channel, I really wanted it as something that I could do as a hobby more than being monetized, more than anything. I really just wanted to learn from the channel. So it didn't matter to me how long it took to be monetized. But for those of you who really want to um, expand their YouTube career, definitely remind people to subscribe at the beginning of the video. So that was what happened to me. The second thing that I think the reason why I didn't have a lot of subscribers as well is because I actually talk about different topics on this channel. 
So I do not have a niche, so to say, because I talk about anything and everything in general. So my main topic is usually about luxury handbags. And then my second topic or my minor topic is about houseplants, which is I know it's very, very far apart. I think people would get confused if they come to my channel and they're like, wow, your video about houseplants is so great. Wait, why is she talking all about designer handbags? I don't want to subscribe to something like that so that was a bit of a confusing part about my channel and right now of course I'm also talking about YouTube analytics but I do feel that as people we're very multifaceted we have different um, things that, and interests that we like and I just want to explore all of them especially since I am a new youtuber and I don't want to fall into a certain niche just yet and that's the reason why i do have videos on all sorts of topics anyways i think in the future if i see that one topic really draws in a lot more subscribers and a lot more uh, watch time i might just go into that one topic but for now i am very much happy doing a lot of different types of videos so the next thing that I want to discuss is exactly how YouTube determines how much you get paid as a YouTuber. So YouTube has this uh, metric called CPM, which is cost per mil, and that's basically how much advertisers are willing to pay per 1,000 views to YouTube. So YouTube actually takes a cut of this, and then the rest of the money, they distribute it to the creator, which is the YouTuber. Uh, recently they actually introduced something called RPM and this is actually much more accurate so that is your revenue per mil and that's the exact amount that you get paid for every 1,000 views and your RPM is dependent on a number of factors the first one is your topic so on my channel I have different topics and you can see on different videos I get different RPMs in terms of houseplants, I don't think it is a very high RPM, but then again, I do get a lot of views on that particular video, so um, I don't mind that my RPM is kind of low. In terms of luxury handbags, I think it is a higher RPM simply because it is a more advertiser-friendly sort of um, topic in which advertisers would be willing to pay more money for an audience who are interested in luxury handbags. The topics that actually get the most amount of money is usually finance, uh, education, things talking about YouTube like this. Um, and that's why I think a lot of people do want to talk about YouTube on their channel or talk about business on their channel is because it really does bring in a high RPM. The ones that actually get the lowest RPM are those that are like cat videos or entertainment videos, the ones that you just sort of watch in passing and you might watch an ad or something but it has to be a very general ad because the video is for a very general audience. The second thing that affects your RPM is the demographics of your audience. So in terms of demographics, they, YouTube usually likes an older audience. Uh, if you are, for instance, doing videos for those 18 and below, this will usually get you a lower RPM simply because if you think about it as teenagers, we didn't really have a lot of disposable income. So even if we liked a lot of the things that were being advertised to us, we really just didn't have the money to spend on those things. So advertisers pay a little bit low for that demographic. And then once you get to the 25 years and above, they usually pay a lot more. So the third thing that also affects your RPM would be your watch time. So in terms of my watch time, I'm actually very proud of this. I have something around 30% or higher for most of my videos. And I think as long as you reach uh, about one fourth watch time or 25%, YouTube considers that very good already and they will continue to recommend your videos. So this happened with one of my videos very early on. You can see that in the beginning, one of my plant videos had zero views for the first few days. Maybe it had like 10 views and then all of a sudden, uh, YouTube started realizing the type of people that it should recommend to and the video took off. So watch time is very important because 
as when YouTube recommends the videos, they want to see if people will click through your thumbnail, will watch your video for a certain amount of time at least, keep their attention before going on to the next video or even clicking out of YouTube. So watch time is very, very important as well. I, I forgot to mention in demographics, demographics also includes the region that you're in. So if you're in Asia, like the way I am, and you are trying to get more of a audience who speaks English, it might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I do think this is one of the reasons why my RPM is a little bit low as well. The highest paying advertisers are usually from the United States, but since I upload my videos in Asia, it will usually show it to an Asian audience first before showing it to those in the United States or other English speaking countries. And obviously I do not appeal to a very Asian market that does also affect my RPM and makes it a little bit lower. So I'm not too concerned about it because I know that in the future the YouTube algorithm will figure out out that I don't appeal too much to a very Asian audience. The last thing that I think affects your RPM is how long and how consistent you have been on YouTube. So I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video that I actually took a short hiatus from YouTube for about a month. From July 15 up until, I'm sorry, June 15 up until July 15, I did not upload any videos. So I had an entire month of a break where I didn't upload anything, but before that I had been uploading consistently one video per week. And I think there are some weeks where I actually uploaded two videos. So if you see overall, I have uploaded about 35 videos excluding this one. So that works out more or less to at least one video per week. And I think YouTube, the longer that you are with them, the, lo the more that they see you are consistently uploading, uh, the more they will reward you. So I'm not too worried that my RPM is very low at this point because I do know that if I continue on this channel that my RPM will eventually reach the amount that it should be or I think is um, comparable to other luxury or channels that are similar to mine. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this week's video. That was just a really brief overview of my YouTube analytics. I actually watched so many videos when I was starting to get on YouTube and I felt that everything was just so confusing after a while. And I realized that the most important thing is actually just to get started. So if you are watching this video because you're thinking of getting started on YouTube, forget all of the analytics. Everything will just follow you will get used to it. Um, I've not actually touched anything. So the moment that I got monetized, I know that you can tweak some of the monetization settings in terms of like what sort of advertisers can put ads on your video, but I've not actually touched anything. I've just let YouTube take care of it, whether they want to play mid-roll ads in my videos or they don't want to or whatever. I've just left everything as um, default. And I think most regular YouTubers, unless you are sort of somebody who is talking about the YouTube algorithm or talking about uh, how to grow on YouTube. If your channel is not about that, you really don't need to remember all of the terms and all of these things. The most important thing is to consistently produce quality content, to have good thumbnails, and to just show up actually, to really just show up for your audience and showing people that you are serious or, well, in my case, semi-serious about doing your YouTube channel. So I hope that this video did help and if you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos as well, and I will see all of you guys in a future video. Bye-bye!